G'day and welcome to game two in this lower bracket final between Polaris and T1. T1 took game one in an absolute epic. If you haven't seen it, uh, I would highly recommend going back and, and watching that, even if you know the result of this series afterwards. Game one was was a was one of those games. It was a good one. So we'll have to see what happens in game two here, whether Polaris can pull it back and advance to the grand four, have give themselves another shot to advance, or whether T1 close it out. Initial bands, Morphling and Enigma from Polaris. T1 take out the Chen and the Bat, and T1 just immediately grab the Undying Radiance first pick. pick. T1's turn to pick. Polaris return fire with the Marcy and Lena. Oh, strong combos here. So this looks to be a mid Lena, very strong uh, Lena. They're going to have to pick someone who can lane up against that Lena and get at least something out of the lane. Marcy can be run as a three or four. Ten seconds remaining. Depending on how you want to round out your draft. So give me a little bit of flexibility in the initial picks from Polaris. T1 similarly with the Undying does have some flexibility with who they want to uh, run that on. I'm, I'm getting suspicion. They might just give it to Ana again. They might just give it to Ana again. Call me crazy. I think they might. I think they're making that decision right now. Undying was let through, and they're trying to figure out, do we run around the core Undying again? Or do we just want to leave it? I think it did, I did fine. Beastmaster. Beastmaster. Okay, so... Beastmaster would indicate that this is uh, at least not a three Undying. Assuming that Cuckoo will be on the Beastmaster. It wasn't banned the Beast. Normally that's banned in, in second phase bans, so grabbing up in the first phase does, uh, does show your hand a little bit. But if you want the hero, you want the hero. Second ba phase bans now, the Enchantress and the Sniper so far. Uh, Beast will provide that, that vision. Also some strong single target lockdown. And the pushing potential that comes with the, with the creeps and the Helm of the Overlord that Beastmaster is likely to grab up. So that does point towards maybe another core undying in terms of the timing you look around. However, the core undying can go late. You can get the tombstone on death, get the reincarnation, and you, you can take it late with the core undying pretty easily if you want to go super late like we did last game. T1 have sucked a lot of their reserve time already in this second draft, thinking about who they're going to ban here. They've removed the Enchantress, Chan as well. They don't want Polaris to have their own uh, zoo coming towards them. Assuming this is a four Marcy and a one Lena, uh, T1 are probably thinking of, of banning some fives. Depends on what you want to aim ban here. I think you want to start banning Natsumi's heroes. Radiant team back. T -ones turn to probably back. start banning Natsumi's heroes. Uh, if you leave that till till last, he's going to get pretty much the pick of the draft. Faceless Void is still available. Viper taken out. Puck in return from Polaris. Faceless, I think, needs to be banned here. The Natsumi would happily pick up the Faceless with Alina. You get that LSA follow-up. We've seen it many times before. Faceless Void would fit well into this draft. Particularly with the sidekick from Marcy. Uh, who gets first pick? First pick in the next phase will be to Polaris. They ban PA. That might indicate they're, they're looking for... It's the Winter Wyvern. Uh, they're looking for Bristle back here. T1. They've got rid of the Viper and the PA. So two heroes that can break the, the Bristle. Considering you've already picked the Beastmaster, it's not like you're going to go back and grab a Timber. But Bristle seems like they've set themselves up here. Or, or a Spectre. Spectre or Bristle seems to be what they're thinking towards. This Winter Wyvern, I love the pick. I think it's underpicked at the moment, along with Grimstroke. I'd love to see a bit more Grimstroke being played. Um, but the Winter Wyvern does provide the, the large uh, AoE lockdown with the Curse. And particularly the Beastmaster when you have the, the boars plus the, the additional creep. They actually go for the Faceless Void. Okay. 
Um, it can turn turn around the damage onto an ally very, very quickly with the Arcane Curse. So I think maybe T1's plan there was leave Void in the draft. Let Polaris pick it and then pick Bristle themselves. But since... Since they didn't pick the Void, they decide they just grab it themselves because it's a little bit too strong. Oh. Naga Siren. Oh, the Naga against the Void. The Aghanim Scepter, Naga can throw the net out on the BKB Void during the Chrono and just reel him in. Just reel him in and completely waste the duration of the Chronosphere. So there is a clear counter here for, Pol for Polaris if the game goes late enough. And I think T1, now that they are showing this is probably the, the safe lane support undying, the pos 5 undying. I don't, I'm not really comfortable with this draft from T1. Definitely not as comfortable as it was in the first game. I think Polaris with that Naga pick have really given themselves some options to turn this game around. Winter Wyvern against the Beast, Naga against the, the Faceless Void. Marcy for good catch. They need some frontline, Polaris. So T1, they ban out the Doom. Perfect, perfect little ban there. Welcome to the stream, Toskek. Um, and they, I think we'll ban, yeah, the Titans. So just another frontlining hero. I mean, there's so many they could ban out here. Mars is still in the pool. It's one that comes to mind. Slada, Centaur are both available as well. Unless you are just running this as, as a three Marcy. It's quite possible. But I said Slenta, Centaur, Slada, Mars. Timber is still there. Maybe a lockdown from T1 between the Raw, the Chrono, plus the, the Willow spells. And they've got good team fight, T1. I think if the game goes late enough though, Polaris have answers. Yeah, the, the Arc Game Curse is very, very strong. Yeah, you get the, the song. If you catch if you catch a Croy to avoid who isn't uh BKB inside their chrono, you can just song. Just song and you waste the duration of the chrono. It's pretty impactful. Zeus is the last ban from Polaris, removing that Topson hero. Uh in Invoker Band as well, I was gonna say. Pugna? No, it won't be the Pugna, it'll be the Arc Warden. Okay, so this I think will we will see another like magic damage associated Arc Warden. Not like a utility Arc Warden, but definitely building towards the magic damage item. Maybe an Aghanim Scepter, get the cooldown reduction with the Octarine Core. Maybe a Dagon as well at some point. Because Faceless Void uh, and the and the Beastmaster will, will be providing enough physical damage. If you want to diversify your damage in this game, um, you you want to give a little, let uh, Topson try to carry this game a little bit earlier with the magic build up, and uh, let Anna pull it late with the void. But Polaris, they have another pick, and so far I've been uh, pretty uh, pretty impressed with their their picks this draft to counter out what T1 had put on the table. Slada would be very much pick off and single target focused and not really a lot of team fight. I just wonder what Polaris are thinking here. Whether they want to build something around this, this Arcane Curse. You could follow up with an arena on top of that. It's pretty good. Enigma is banned out. There's Darkseer. Ooh, Darkseer. I think Darkseer is the pick. You get, good, you get good illusions with the Arc Warden and the Faceless Void. And with the Beastmaster, you get the illusions. Oh, I'm sold. If they pick Darkseer, I think Polaris have, have easily won this draft. Hasn't been banned, has it? No. Hasn't been banned. If if Force is comfortable playing the Darkseer, which I would assume he is, I think that combos really, really well and, and counters out what T1 are trying to do. You may now select your heroes. Okay, so it's core Marcy. 
That's well, a core Marcy. Three, three Marcy on force. Okay, that's fair enough. Fair enough. Um, give yourself a little bit extra burst with the the net LSA as well. You can throw the Mystic Flare on top. Uh, that, that's fine. That's fine. I, I think I think uh, Dark Sea would have been absolutely insane against T1 this game if they put Marcy as the the four and Dark Sea as the three. You could add the early game you have the iron shield on top of the marcy yeah, it would have been would have been absolutely devastating but polaris have made their choice so moving into game two i think with that last pick i'm more inclined to think the t1 will probably clean up this game with the overwhelming team fight and no real way uh, apart from the song to get themselves out of it there will be a BKB on, on the Void. At some point, you would assume. How about Cuckoo, though? Topson depends on the build he goes for, whether he goes physical or magical, but either way, we'll probably have a BKB. Hmm. So, game two in this lower bracket elimination match. Lower bracket final in Polaris and T1 kicking off and i have high hopes after game one game one i think that's the best game i've seen in in south Asian qualifiers so i have to see if game two can can live up to what we saw in game one most roshan kills quickly do our little predictions so i think i think t1 will uh will probably come out with this one with the draft now Trees destroyed. Yes, Tombstone destroys trees. LSA destroys trees. The other spells as well. Righto. Teams are ready. We're moving in to match. Pause will finish. So T1 and Polaris both heading out with the smokes. Force heading to the top lane. Doesn't have a ward on him, but Xavius does have sentries and obs. The Louch doesn't have either. Where's the other sentry at? Oh, the other obs at. Must be EU. EU's got sentries and obs heading into their jungle for the side of T1. Zephyr has an obs. Opson doesn't actually. Where are the sentries at? White Mon has a sentry and an obs. Only just the one sentry. So wood will be placed down in the jungle. Or T1. I'll chuck this. So that's actually uh, not for T1. That's uh, Polaris' own ward in their own jungle. And this one, I don't think it was actually scouted out. They don't have their own ward in this area. Other wood in front of the rush pit and up on this high ground to catch any early rotations around the top side. So Level 1 team fights. Uh, Polaris have a decent one with the, the Arctic Burn LSA if they want to use it. Actually, it's trying to start eating up the spark rates with the illusions a pretty important part of this draft you, you have picked a an arc warden into a naga so those naga illusions will just eat the arc the spark rates all around the map doesn't look like doesn't look like actually the arc contestants ever throws down the bramble on top of natsumi he will be able to walk away actually does get caught again top side uh will be two runes apiece and we'll head into our lane. So in the mid lane, the latch on the Lena will be going up against Topson on the Arc Warden. In the bottom lane, Natsumi on the one Naga Siren being supported by the Wyvern, playing played by Ayu. They'll be laying against Cuckoo on the Beastmaster and Zephyr on the Dark Willow, starting first with the, the Ring of Basilius. In the top lane, we have Ana on the Faceless Void, level one walk. Laning against Force on the three Marcy and Xavius, who's actually getting a courier there on the Skyrath Mage. And Arna's being supported by the, the five Undying being played by Wyvern. So already uh, being bullied here by the Undying. Dispose does chuck him back into the tower, takes a few hits. But White One doesn't care that much, he just keeps throwing out those decays and will just keep Force out of the lane for as long as possible. Trying to get level two onto. Anna, without really much contest. 
The level two on force is, is the real dangerous one, particularly against the undying here. I should be able to just time walk away. But with a, with a plus one, level two with the rebound disposed back and combo up quite nicely with that uh, Skyrath mage. Mid lane Topson starting to eat the Dragon Slaves to the face. And this is how you play as Alina. You stand on top of the high ground, you get the fiery soul stacks, and then you just hit the other, just hit the opponent. That's how you win the lane. It's very simple, very strong. Uh, if you can secure that, that early farm and transition into late game on the Lena, gets a bit of right click physical damage, becomes a real threat. Uh, there is a Bramble Chuck down. The root will come out. Tango to eat through, and we'll be just fine. Zephyr has the level in Shadow Realm at the moment, partly to keep himself safe, but also to potentially give a little bit more damage if he needs the burst. Cuckoo is taking a bit of a beating, still has the salve and three tangos, so we'll be just fine as long as he doesn't get bursted uh, by a surprise and snare or something. Arctic Burn does come out, the original hit gets off, and Cuckoo gets that's a lot, that's so much damage. Zephyr and Cuckoo taking it on this bottom lane. Long range harass. Mid lane. 14 and 2 to 13 and 0. So Topson playing this lane quite well against the Louch, even against the, the Lena Harass that he can bring out. Actually, White Mon is just decaying behind the tower. Of course, losing a little bit of damage. Ana actually still hasn't brought any regen. Uh, maybe not on that first career that was coming out, it got killed, but uh, he hasn't really needed it. With White Mon here. Got a couple of sentries himself, bottom lane. Oh, sorry, Tango's himself to heal him up if he needs it. And if you don't need regen, just don't buy it, right? Then you uh then you have more gold. Simple equation. Falcon Blade being worked on by Lelouch. A plane. White man's gotta be careful now that there's the level three on on force. I mean, the decays are so strong, they don't even want to go in. He's just trying to trade against Ana at the moment. Time Walk will come out and he needs a salve. But he's trying to save up for this Helm Vine will going in for the armlet build up. He's just losing all presence on the lane because he doesn't have health at the moment. Force. Certainly not a good way to start this lane. If you want to be strong as Marcy, level 3, you should be just uh, bullying. Oh, look at that deny. Should be just bullying the uh, the safe lane, at least the safe lane support with the levels that you have. Pull does get disrupted, so Davis will bring that one back to the lane. Atsumi, 23 and 2, as opposed to Faces Void 16 and 9, so Atsumi getting the, the better of the early game farm on lane. Kuku just can't really contest this Naga, particularly with the Winter Wyvern behind. I was actually hit. I think you might get the kill here. This could be first blood. Doesn't quite get it through, but oh, the fairy flyer. He might just walk away. And Zephyr, he's on the run. The splinter blast didn't hit the TP out. He will just do it, so no first blood just yet. White Mon's still bullying force in this top lane. Can try and turn around, but I don't think he wants to fight against this 73 damage of the undying. Particularly when he's on full HP. Just standing here, just decaying over and over again. He does go in. With the dispose and the rebound. Following up, silence from Xavius. Trying to get the, the damage through, but Wybon just turns around with the soul rip, heals himself. Ana's here with a level one in bash, doesn't get it off. So five minutes in. First blood is yet to occur. Zephyr coming mid. Level two in Bramble. I try and loop around on the Louch. Get Topson a kill. If uh, if the Louch hits level six here, which he does, and, and has enough mana sustain, could be could be issues for Topson. Back to the. Fact that will just head back to the bottom lane. Doesn't rotate mid at all. Ah, uh, Cuckoo! This could be the first blood. I think it will be. One more hit coming through the. Oh, the stick! How many times can T1 just get away? On zero health, the scan comes out. They know exactly where Zephyr is. The Louch. As the ward on the high ground, won't get caught off here at all. Rune contest. Davis is in the area, so is White Mon. Silence comes out. Is there an LSA to follow up? There's Laguna. Don't even need the LSA. The damage will be there. The stick, though. Actually, the very fight is healing enough. 
Will Outro be the one to go down? Actually, after all this, the first blood will go to Thompson. After all that, the first blood does go to Thompson. T1, get away with murder there a couple of times. Even White One's going to make it out once again. So many close encounters with death for the side of T1. And end up claiming the first blood themselves. Forces 18 and 7 to the faceless void, 28 and 3 on this lane. So he's really struggling at the moment. Exposing back silence. Does have the level 2 stun to follow up. Arna will just be able to backtrack damage. I say backtrack. I mean, I mean time walk the damage. And it'll be just fine. Ward plan behind the tower from Zephyr. Wants to see any rotations coming through. We'll actually catch uh, you coming out. Uh, nighttime vision. We'll see him now. So they're aware that the Dark Willow is hanging around on this mid lane. But White Bond's here as well, so they won't give Thompson support. He has the level 6. Tempest Double is up. They might get the catch, though, at the Flux. Spark Race to follow with the Tempest Double. Getting a Flux over onto Xavius. The Winter Wyvern does die pretty convincingly and pretty quickly there. And as the Spark Wraiths start to get spammed out behind the tower, it's hard to approach. The Tempest Dazzle will go down. Back on the top lane, Force is still trying to fight up against Ana. I mean, he can with the level 3 in the sidekick, but Ana just time walks the damage and doesn't really care. Goes back to farming. Once he gets the Unleash on Marcy, though, and the Armlet, I think as long as there's a plus one, he can just kill the, the Faceless Void with the rebound stun. Cuckoo level 6. Hasn't grabbed the Primal Roar just yet. Has the three in the axes. Ace Rune being guarded top by Whiteman. Opson will work his way to it. Has the bottle. Although, Xavius just goes and denies. There's no thank you. Not today. No haste rooms to Topson. We'll protect our, our mid lane for a little bit longer. Armlet. A 400 gold away on force. And that will be a very strong timing once he gets the level 4 sidekick as well. Pull this offlane Marcy. Mid lane, there's a lot of action around. Everyone's walking back and forth. But not many kills at this point. The Louch has the Falcon Blade. Going in for the boots to travel. Wants to be quick and agile on the map. There's two man rotation. They catch him with the Cursed Crown and the Flux. I don't think he's getting away from this. Shadow Realm damage to follow up. Turn around. He's trying to be on Zephyr, but he doesn't quite get the damage. In fact, he is still running with the Fiery Soul movement speed, but uh, that last right click from the clone will get the job done. I think if he got the LSA onto Zephyr and followed with the Dragon Slave as well, he would have got the turnaround kill. Definitely would have lived, but may have got the turnaround kill. He tried to sort of have a, a foot in each camp there with the Laguna and Laguna and Run, but didn't end up getting out. Whitemon level 2 in Tombstone wants to level that out. Mac max it out first. Has the infused raindrops to make sure he has a bit of mana. Still no boots though on this Undying. As we switch over net worth, we can see uh, 897 gold net worth to the Undying. So rip him. In fact, he's got no permanent items. These are all consumables. They're all consumables on the Undying uh, 10 minutes into the game. Not a single item. Stun in with the rebound and the Unleash. Silence. He's a Chrono. Stopping it. We'll have a chance to get the tombstone off. There it is. DK out. Heal back through. Ana. Damage is there from Thompson as well. Force. He's still fighting actually with the armlet. Ana, he can't do it. Just the armlet toggle. White Mon, you go in. No, you can't fight this man. He's too strong. So that was a chrono committed. Xavius does go down, but uh, as I said, this level sort of 7 8 timing with the sidekick. Armlet Unleash. Force is very, very strong. Makes the hero look incredibly broken once you hit that timing. Eyal's in the bottom lane. Soaking up the XP with the level 3 Splinter Blast. We'll just hold the lane for a little bit longer against Cuckoo. Cuckoo's level 8. As the Roar has not used it yet. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Top lane. Curse Crown over onto Force. There is a Bedlam. Will the Armlet toggle come through? It will. He didn't get the damage off. It's a Spark Wraith. It will come through. Armlet will 
Deal with the damage. So Force just sort of outplaying them on this top lane here, and if he can get towards a BKB and a Basher, man, this uh, this Marcy is going to be a threat on the map. Louch has the Lance of Pursuit, good little bonus damage if someone's trying to run away. Xavius, no boots yet himself. I actually have them being sent out. Three is pretty close. There they are, the brown boots. I'm interested. Does Whiteman have any permanent items yet? He does. He has the brown boots, so. He has an item that won't be consumed, Whiteman. Feels good for the, the five undying. Because he doesn't really get a lot of space or farm in this position. Uh, so terrorize this game could be very powerful. Sending back potentially the saves coming uh, for the Chronosphere. So drop Chrono Terrorize in the back line so that no one can, can assist. Certainly a situation we might see. Spark Brace chopped down in the trees, just stopping any support from coming in. Well, it happens. Winter Wyvern does go down. Is that the raw committed? Ah, uh, with the with the helm of the Dominator complete, has the has the water the stomp and will kill. Tombstone dropped. Blackman slowed down. Will heal himself back up with the Soul Rip. But the, the Tombstone is slowly being chipped. We'd love to get the love to get the the gold for that one. Pretty slow start to this one. Zephyr is invisible on top of Force. Has the Bedlam and the Terrorize. Might just try to open with the Terrorize here, but he's got to be careful. There's the Curse Crown following up. Damage is coming through from the Bedlam. Force is stun locked out. He's got nothing. Nothing to give. Couldn't jump away anywhere. Couldn't heal himself up with the sidekick, so just has to tank it. Not doesn't use the Unleash. Would love to have that cooldown ready to go when he respawns. Hundred second bottom lane underneath the tower. Curse has been used on Cuckoo. And with his own creeps fighting against him, he will go down. Uh, you has to be careful. With all the skeletons, and try and run away. I think he will be just fine. And uh, that will be a kill with the use of the Winter's Curse against the Beastmaster. And that was the interaction we called out in the draft. That with the Winter's Curse, you can use Beastmaster's own creeps against him. A bit like the uh, little friends shard upgrade on the Enchantress now. You see the Enchantress picked up against the Lycans and against uh, the Beastmasters. Visage because well no not Visage they're not they're not creeps actually come up the high ground here. Xavius. We could save actually jump up. They go first with the armlet. The unleash is popped with the damage. There's a net coming through and the Undying just disappears. TP will. Uh, We'll make it out on Zephyr with the TP. So that little rotation there certainly didn't uh, didn't get the job done. The longer this game goes, I think the more it benefits Polaris with this Naga. She will be able to control the map very easily. Uh, Marcy is always going to have the burst to pretty much take down anyone in this game. Two men, three men smoke coming out from T1. Topson leading the charge. Has got the maxed out Flux and Spark Wraith. Tempest Double ready as well. Zephyr has Bedlam plus Terrorize. No Tombstone though on White Mon, so he's really just here for a Decay and a Soul Rip. Cuckoo has the Roar. I want to find more though. Here they are. Tops and Smoke dispels. Bramble will go into the ground, blocking the exit path. Winter's Curse does catch actually over onto the Dark Willow. And with the LSA follow up, that's a dead Zephyr. Topson walking away with the clone. Natsumi's TP'd in as well. Song is popped. They're trying to catch Cuckoo. Running down Force, giving the additional movement speed. They find the Beastmaster. He has a roar. I doubt it'll be enough to save him. He does throw it out, but the ASC, LSA is there first. Net follow up through. There's the Laguna. And uh, the Centaur Stomp is not there fast enough to save the day. And in fact, that Centaur will just go down in the top tier one. Cliff is used, but it won't be long for this world with Natsumi here. Manta ready. And excellent use of that first song. Ana has the Midas. Queued up the Maelstrom BKB. So he's recognizing this game is potentially going to go quite a long time as well. Judging on... Based on uh, game one, there are these camps are blocked. So no camps spawning here for Ana. Back on this top side. Ayu does get the Curse Crown. Brambles are dodged and over the edge you'll go. 
get the level three Arctic Burn actually. Actually, what was happening? Oh my goodness. Little engagement top, but Force just solos Ana in the mid lane. Um, I guess it wasn't a solo. No. He didn't even use Unleash. Top lane. I mean, uh, if I had my production value, production would show you a replay of of uh, of what happened that mid lane because that's quite unusual. I thought maybe with the leash un unleash and misuse of the time walk, sure you could get that kill, but without without the unleash being used, it's quite quizzical how how we got the damage through. Topson Maelstrom as well, so will be double Maelstrom on the side of T1. The, the, the Midas, please use it. Oh, you're gonna see him. Oh, they're coming in. I think Arna is in trouble. Might have to defensively Chrono to live through this. The TPs are coming in support. But we should be able to jump through. And with Zephyr and Whiteman here, they don't commit through. I thought maybe they had the Ancient Seal in range. Now it's actually T1 that want to take the fight. Knowing they have the Chrono and the Tombstone. Level 3, Flesh Golem is available. Bedlam, Terrorize. But Lelouch turns up. The damage is there. The Silence is through and... Arna just dies again, that time with the Unleash. Zephyr on the run. Double toys forward, will find White Mod. Lacuna through and Oh, it's a, it's a... It's a destruction. They have so much damage early between the Laguna, between the Unleash. You saw that Faceless Void. He's working towards the Maelstrom. It's going to be a long time till he gets the BKB. He's just not going to be able to show on the lane. Not going to show anywhere. If he shows and there is a level 4 Ancient Seal in the area, he's just dead. He just will be dead. There's the seal again. And with the Mystic Flare. Ooh, Zephyr. Dark Willow just maybe loses concentration there for a moment. At uh, where where the enemy heroes were potentially at. And there is Vision sitting up here, so... That might get dewatered from the side of T1. I, I strongly get the feeling this game is going to... He's going to last. It's going to go a distance here. Both teams are taking it pretty slowly. Impolaris starting to pick up the pace now with the BKB armlet on Marcy. The the basher is going to be the, the real turning point where you can just solo the, the void. All staff being worked on from the U. Whiteman still doesn't have any items really to speak of. Just the buckler. Under not really getting any items this game and yeah, not even 2,000 net worth just yet. Topson is forced to use the magnetic field to deal with the illusions. And Natsumi, next item is getting close. It's the Marcy dying bottom lane. They hit the catch. Is that the Chrono? Actually not even used. Terrorize plus Bedlam will do the job. Xavius does have his own ward down here, so shouldn't really get caught by, uh, by them. Has a TP out. Philly Stone wants to soak a little bit of XP in the trees here. It is night time, so actually soaking XP. No, he wants to get the kill. Uh, he will show himself now. Immediately tries to TP out, but uh, that's going to be a dead. That's going to be a dead Skyrath Mage. And while that's happening, though, the Aegis has claimed the distraction plays, the sleight of hand. Hey, Polaris are feeling like a different team this game. Not being... Not falling into the same traps as game one, and... Yeah, they lose their Skyrath Mage on bottom, but... Man, just playing them around the map. So with Aegis now on the Louch, Specialist Array in the backpack. Still, I think, one of the best neutral items in the game. Working towards a BKB is going to be very, very strong. Anna has the Maelstrom, still working towards that BKB. Will be essential this game, even just as a bit of a dispel um, to save himself when that silence comes out. Thompson will throw out the spells. Flux plus the Spark Wraith onto the Louch, but he's got an Aegis. We'll just force him back a little bit. Zephyr. Invis Rune is holding onto the book at the moment. Could have level 10 if he wanted it. Does use it now. 
And I said, this game, actually mid lane, they found once again, the Arc Warden, the cause of Tijuana just being picked Fire's off. Such quick moves and they're looking for more. Tumblr's toy forward, Zephyr has managed to get away with the, the Shadow Realm. And Topson just gets, just, he was there and now he wasn't. Such a strong spell, the level 4 Ancient Shield, 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 Seal, 6 seconds. And they're looking for more? They want more. They want Ana. It is daytime, it will be hard to catch. Yeah, I think maybe the vision caught just maybe those TPs coming in for a moment, so Arnold was saved by that ward coming out. This combo, I think we might see it more moving towards TI. The Skyrath Mage plus Marcy. Mid lane, but not there. Terrorize coming out on two. Natsumi has been caught in the fear. Bedlam might be enough damage. Does Manta dodge the stun? Pumps. How oh, he should have songed. He pumped it, but did decide not to. Magnetic field, give me additional attack speed, the raw there as well. And Natsumi does go down. He thought about it. He put his arms in the air, Natsumi. He put them up. He raised them high and then said, no, I'll just I'll just walk away. And in that moment, Arna popped the chronosphere and Snaga Siren was was no more. But immediately looking to fight back now. No, no Chrono, no Tombstone. They know the cooldowns are up. No Bedlam or Raw. They're just going to take the tower, I think. Just going to charge down the mid lane. Forces here. Giving over the sidekick damage to the Louch. But the Magnetic Field is just holding him a little bit longer. They might not be able to get the job done. That would be fairly disappointing here for Polaris. Not, not getting that clear objective out of... out of those long cooldowns being used. Once again, Ana is on this bottom, has the BKB now. He did quickly get to that with the, Mal with the Maelstrom and the Midas, so he is very safe now. Won't die to this Ancient Seal. Atsumi has the Eye of Skadi, working towards a heart. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. Is the Aghanim Scepter being queued up? It is. So heart, then Aghanim Scepter. And with the reel in, the ensnare through spell immunity plus the reel in, it's a it's a super clean counter to this Chronosphere. They want more. Tier 2 mid did fall. They want the one bottom as well. Natsumi posturing up with the illusions. They have uh, been sighted on the high ground by the birds. Birds are in the area. No vision to cut, kill them at the moment. The Louch has ages for another 36 seconds. It's very low. The timing is known from T1. They would like to take a fight right as that expires. But knowing that Polaris, they, they are patient. They back out. They don't give the free kill onto their Lena. Because the Lena at this point is, is quite burstable. She can die. Uh, without that Aegis, can die very, very easily. Hasn't yet got the Satanic and, and a bit of HP, additional HP to go with it. Forces Farm has slowed down quite a lot. Now under under that of Ana's, still above above Cuckoo's Cuckoo's Beastmaster. The offlaners are both starting to fall off just a little bit. But it's Naga and Lena that are leading the way now. 7k net worth lead and the the growth will continue. I think once you have these illusions out on the map and they can clear the waves themselves. This Naga's farm is just going to accelerate so quickly. Sends two illusions there. Takes a couple into the creep wave. See how quickly the creep wave is dying. All that gold is just being thrown into his pockets. So Naga will be the most farmed on the map. Roche pit. No Roche for at least two minutes. 20. Jar will be available on that Roche. And plenty of heroes would love to have that shard. Even just the, the Song of the Siren heal. Just to just to heal up after a chrono, that'd be pretty good. Bottom lane. They have tried to find the Louch. The first crown, first crown hits, but he's too quick with those fiery souls. Just runs away. And you really do wonder about a cursed crown that takes that long to stun someone. And he can just run all the way back to base. I mean, yeah, he, he has a haste. 
So easily getting away. But even hasted, Lena is not that much faster than what she would be with the maxed out Fiery Soul uh, at level 18. Xavius working towards the Vladimir's offering and then the Wraith Pack. So we'll have that soon enough. Actually has the, the recipe already. So just the 600 gold towards the Wraith Pack. And Xavius will be bringing out the damage negation from the Skyrath Mage. Rather you'd say that. Normally you'd be saying damage uh, damage amplification. The increased damage from the Skyrath Mage. But now he'll be looking to help out his team. Topson has the completed Mjolnir. So I think this is a, a, a better build. We saw the Arca We saw the Wraith. Dark uh, Wooden last time, game one, being handled by Natsumi. He went for the real magic damage build. Just didn't quite get the do job done. Went for the Gleipnir and o Octarine Core, Dagon. Uh, this game, because it slowed down so much, maybe Topson was originally going to go for that build himself, but because with the pace of the game, he's decided, well, I don't even need to go for that, that build. I can just go physical damage. He's gone for the Hurricane Pike, the Olnir, going into the Silver Edge. I does just want the damage. Natsumi. If he's bottom, we'll show on the lane. But Zephyr and, and Ana probably don't have much of an interest in trying to kill him off on this bottom lane. Probably wouldn't even have the damage between the two of them to get the job done. Top lane. Clones are continuing to push out. There's no boots of travel yet on this Tempest double. So that is a, a bit of a concern for Topson. You do have to send the, the illusion out to where you want him to farm from where you are. And because of that, the Naga is just getting a further and further ahead with the farm. The Louch not mucking around either. Has the Silver Edge online. So Silver Edge will be breaking up uh, a few abilities. Inner Beast, one to cancel out. I guess the, the Time Lock. Decent one to get rid of. But uh, apart from that, that's that's really it. So just the... the the utility of the Silver Edge with the, the additional crit damage and the, the invisibility. It's not always about the break, but you certainly want to have some value for that break. Otherwise, it does feel like a bit of a bit of a wasted item. You'd rather just get, you know, Bloodthorn or a Daedalus instead of that, instead of that Silver Edge. Roche has spawned. And straight into the pit go Polaris. Tatsumi with that neck, with the damage coming out from the illusions. It's a lot. It's a little too much at the moment. The Riptide armor reduction is eight. And look, we have the Aghanim Scepter. It's online. The Ensnare and the Reel In. <clears throat> and Smoke from T1. They want to make their way over. They still want to fight after this. Shard was grabbed on the Winter Wyvern. So the Cold Embrace improvement. Throw it over. Ensnare. Reel it in. Onto this Topson Illusion, but... Really just uh, playing with them. The rest of the team are sitting far enough behind not to get caught. More Hawks providing vision. The Lash will see that one and, and remove it. Is there a gem? Just checking the gem situation for both teams. So neither team has a gem at the moment. I think with the Hawks being flown around all over the map, Polaris would really benefit from picking up a gem. Either support queued up, no. You just don't want to get... You don't want to be under vision of a hawk without knowing it. That's a, a, a huge risk against a faceless void. Now, that's the sort of thing that can just straight up lose you the game against a void or a beastmaster. Um, they have the, the hawk vision. You don't know about it and, and you're just dead. Trying to get the illusion here. Hurricane Pike. I think the damage will come through fast enough. Yeah, so... Plus gold goes over to Polaris and... 11k net worth lead. They're just getting further and further ahead. The items will be continue to coming out. It's the MKB getting queued up next for the Louch. Xavius. Ghost Scepter. Wants to be able to survive against the Faceless Void. Natsumi with that Ag's complete. Now the, the Blink Dagger. Wants to be able to catch him with a Song perhaps. Blink Song. And, and follow up behind. The side of T1. Whitemon has the Four Staff. Zephyr has the Etherlands. Cuckoo. Blink Dagger online as well. So initiation potential is there. Going for his own Silver Edge on Topson. And Ana, the one that matters the most, on this bottom lane, hiding in the trees. As a Lincoln Sphere, has his other two items, his BKB and his Maelstrom. And he's just chilling here at the moment. Thinking it's not potentially that safe to go farm. Waiting to see if any heroes show on the map. In fact, top lane, 
They do show on the clone, but this is how, this is how starved they are right now. I was just getting some, some XP. Is he waiting? Might be waiting for a kill. Actually, Natsumi turns up and the song is immediately out. Lincoln's is popped. There'll be another net in seven. Follow up LSA stun. He's there, but the BKB does come out and TP immediately away. There's the curse. And you're not getting out of this one. Force is there with the basher and Arna goes down. Arna was so patient on this bottom lane, waiting for those creeps to stack up so he gets some farm and probably TP out. But the immediate song put him before the BKB could be there. And yeah, if he had, if he got the BKB off, he could have TP'd out because the ensnare would have procced on the Lincolns. This game too, looking so much more in favor of Polaris at the moment. The illusion, it's doing a lot of work. Actually, they got a, they got a Laguna and he, he dies. Dark Willow actually uh, helps dies as well to get the kill, but the, the Winter Wyvern dies to the illusion, unable to heal through the damage. That's two for one. And there's still an Aegis on the Louch for the additional 1 minute 23. Cuckoo. He needs to somehow find a, a blink roar with the follow up damage. The Wraith packed on the ground, it's going to be difficult. There aren't Lincolns yet. Lincolns or Lotus Orbs. No, no Lincolns or Lotus Orbs at this point. It's a butterfly even on Nagasara now. The MKB. Are there any MKBs? Not even any, any MKBs being queued up. Yes, there is, you know, the, the true strike from the Maelstrom Prox. This is evasion, so that's something. There's an MKB on Lalaus. That's who's got an MKB. <laughs> he's, he's not on the opposition here, so the butterfly on the Naga will be completely uncontested. Creeps coming out, trying to scout. Uh, that's the that's a real tops in there for the time being. Smoke is here. Force has the Basher working on the Abyssal. Jumping in, catches two in the Chrono. Will get the Skyrim Mage. Buyback immediate. They want to take this fight, Polaris. And with Natsumi there, the Song is out. Catching on two. They want to try and get this. Arna, while well, his team is being slept up. They can't quite get the catch. There's another stun coming through. There's a Bash. The damage is there. And Faceless Void is down for 70 seconds. On the back line as well, the rest of T1 is crumbling. Whitemon will get the tombstone up on the high ground, but he dies, and that's four for nothing. I mean, there was a buyback on the on the Skyrath Mage, but that's all you catch. Buyback now from from Zephyr, and onto the high ground they go. Natsumi is completely uncontested, has the gem as well, so the Hawks will not be scouting them out. And the Louch, he doesn't care either. He's just going mid lane. They're splitting up. He actually got the shard as well. The additional 15 more damage for each fiery soul charge. So, I mean, that's like another 105 damage. That's a lot. That's a lot of damage, actually, from that shard. Wowzers. So, trying to blink in with the roar, but no. He does get disposed back. The Elsa comes out. The roar is just wasted. He does have a buyback, but it's not going to be much use without the roar. Tombstone is getting focused down. Topson trying to deal out the magical damage. Buyback comes out from Beastmaster. But Topson, he's in trouble. He's been netted up. The Illusion Army's coming in. He's inside the magnetic field. He will just escape for the time being, Force. Given time to try and get out. He will for the time being. And Polaris, not wanting to extend too far, will get two racks and call it a day. Say that's enough. Buyback come out from the Beastmaster. They're now 27k behind on T1. This is a, this is an all or nothing smoke. It feels like here. Chrono in 15. They need a huge catch. Roshan not available for another over a minute at least. There's a blink, a uh, Winter's Curse, which is going to be, be the bane of T1, this team fight. I mean, I did call it. You get yourself this support undying. You just feel like you're playing with, with one hero less. It's really not that good. Chrono does catch onto two inside the mag field. EKB is committed and 
They get the Lena kill, but the buyback immediately comes out. Trying to get on to Xavius as well, knowing that he has no buyback. But the Bash is there. The LSA follow up, and Hana's down. Has a buyback, but he wants to get back in. Raw following through onto the Marcy. Silver Edge is trying to get the work done with the damage. Marcy does go down. Tombstone on the high ground. Natsumi is trying to get the damage done. But they haven't got onto this onto this Naga Siren. He's, he's in the middle of the fight and he can't be controlled. Topson will die. Is there another net? Not quite in time. Cuckoo grabbing the haste and running away. And that's the two cores dead again for T1. They've drawn the line. Yeah, they had to buy back on Lena. But Xavius did survive. This could just be the GG here. Natsumi's unchallenged. They can't they can't hurt him. With this cloak of flames as well, no mini radiance. Topson will buy back. Is that enough to send them packing? I don't know, no? No Arna for 24. Even if he did buy back, which they're unaware. He he doesn't have a chrono. Oh, he's an instant spawn on Roche. Polaris, they get the instant spawn. It's immediately up and straight in the Roche pit. It's a refresher orb. Aegis cheese refresher. I mean, refresher orb on, on the Winter Wyvern. Surely, right? Winter Wyvern's coming in. Double Winter's Curse? No, double double Soul. No, who are they passing it over to? They're, they're, yeah, there it is. Double Winter's Curse. They, they had to make its hands into the, in, into the Wyvern's pockets at some point. Double Winter's Curse is the item they need. Swift Blink now on Natsumi. Level 23, they smoke up with the Aegis. It was honorably done. Actually, Natsumi doesn't even feel threatened. He doesn't even have the Aegis or the cheese. They find the catch on Ana with the song. Follow up, he will have a BKB if he can click it fast enough. It will be there in time, but he's just dead. The Bash, the Abyssal. And 70 seconds in the well. Polaris, they're being ruthless. Arna just hasn't had a game. Tried to play on this faceless void, but he's fourth on the network. He's 13k behind Natsumi. And, I mean, you give Natsumi a, a hero he can carry on. Not like that uh, magical damage. Arklan Raw comes out. Trying to get the work done. Here comes. Unleash. Forces there with the bashes and Topson. He's trying to live. He can't. He's got no buyback. He's out for a hundred. They're chasing through. There's the follow up. Unleash is still going. Go Scepter. Ogre still told him to get away. Aegis was claimed, but for what effect? With their two cores dead, they're moving on to the, the tier fours. They don't even care about the racks at this point. There's one tier four tower down. They're going for the second. Natsumi wants to finish it off. Using the root from the bird. They're trying to use everything they can. Terrorize. Up. I'm faking it. Terrorize. Will have to be used here. The glyph will expire. We'll send him home. But Lalaud, she just pops the BKB. He wants to keep fighting. On the back line. They use it to kill the Winter's Curse. Arna kills his own teammate. There's a Chrono, but as the Chrono comes out, the Ancient explodes and Polaris take game two.